Hello again from K2VEW's Ham Shack and Workshop. So here we are at the beginning of the RF board. I thought I'd just show you first of all what all the parts look like that we're going to be installing. Laid out in a baking pan just to keep things straight. I have them sorted according to what they are so they're easier to find. This is a big baking pan by the way like I don't know 13 by 9 I guess looks smaller in the camera than it is in my hand for whatever reason. Those are all the parts. I'm going to set those aside. I have them in a pan with a high edge on the outside because I don't want to spill them. Here is the RF board, circuit board. This is the bottom front and this is the top. These little black things are relays and those are going in next. They are not soldered yet. There's 17 of them. And uh, they have a, a white line at the top of each one. Uh, sort of see it. They have to be oriented in the correct direction. Other problem with these. To flip the board over and solder them in, it explains all this very well in the book, by the way. You cannot bend the leads to hold them in place because you could possibly damage the mechanical type relay in, inside so you don't want to bend them so what they tell you to do is lay them all in the board put a book on top flip it over and then solder them all so I figured I'll at least show the beginning of that on this part of the video so what other book would I use for something like that but EMRDF EMRFD experimental methods in radio frequency design so this has to come off my little easel. Okay. We will take the book. I think I'll use the back of the book because I'm liable to splatter solder on it eventually somehow. Lay it right over the top of that. And flip her over. Hand cramp. So that's what we're dealing with on that. I'm going to rearrange my camera and we'll solder a few pins together. I guess at some point I'm going to have to invest in a close-up cam. I have this zoomed in and focused as good as I can get it before I started rolling the film here. I think you can see that. See the pins right in front of my finger? going in and out. That's me pushing down on the board on the book. So my first problem here of course is simply that the board flexes and it's probably not perfectly level. I actually did uh, switch to a different book that's got a hardcover in the hopes that it would help. Uh, let me zoom out actually. That's what I was trying to do. So that's where I'm actually at. You can see the board is on a on the hardcover book. Glare is a problem too. So I'm just going to have to carefully push down on the board with each of these, tack the pins, and make sure they're all soldered. There's a whole bunch of pins to solder. As you can see, there's 17 of these things. I'm not going to make a video of me soldering every one. Maybe I'll solder one on camera, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay. Here we are, set up to solder. I adjusted the lighting to try to make the glare as little as possible while still allowing me to solder through my magnifying glass. I'm actually not using the LED light on the magnifying glass. I'm using a different light. So, um, right in front of my finger, you can see those pins flexing. I'm, gonna, I'm picking the hardest one first. I'm going for the middle of the board where it flexes the most. And I'm pushing down and I'm going to hit just one pin at a time on each corner hoping yeah it, it's locking it into place then there we go yeah so you can see the pins are all all the way up. It has put it tacked it in place with the first couple ones, and now I can let go. I'm not pushing down anymore to flex the board. 
and we'll finish soldering each pin now. And then the rest is more of the same. I have uh, 17 relays and they each have uh, 8 pins. No. 10 pins. 170 pins to solder. To solder for my British friends. I'm surprised. I just happened to think about that. The Canadian uh, channels I watch, Jim Linden is being one. I believe Mr. Carlson is also can in Canada. The Mr. Carlson's lab fame. He has a bit of a Canadian accent. I grew up in Buffalo, New York, well, Tonawanda, and uh, had friends from Canada. One of my best friends in high school, uh, we used to go, he had a house, and his family had a house in Canada, a uh, vacation home, and we used to go over there. And uh, so I got very used to Canadian accents. And um, it's not truly British, it's unique. Canadian accents are very unique. And... Uh, it's only a few words, really. It's not even that heavy of an accent. At any rate, they don't say solder. I think they say solder, just like Americans. They've unfortunately adopted uh, many things from the U.S. that are maybe not as good as they should be. Solder being one of them. Solder is really the correct way to say it because it's, it's sold. The word sold, like I sold my car, S-O-L-D-E-R. Sold-er, not solder. Anyhow... <laughs> Let's get off that soapbox. Um, 170 to go, right? No, I did 170. 160 pins to go. I'm going to do the rest off camera, and then we'll move on from there with the rest of the board. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're back for the little wrap-up here to this little segment with the relays. Relays are all installed, as you can see. They're all soldered in. I'm back now. And uh, it wasn't too bad once I got going. I just wanted to point one thing out. The, ne the next part of this build is all resistors and capacitors, which I'm just going to populate the board and then come back at the end after that. There's some resistance checks to do uh, after all the those are installed. Nothing too interesting to watch. I just wanted to point out one little thing. Why Elcraft kits are so good. Some of the instructions seem rudimentary, explaining how to do little things here and there, but they want people to be successful. And their kits are of such a high quality, and the instructions are of such a high quality. I want to bring that to people's attention if you didn't know. I wish they made more kits. Like I said, they discontinued a couple of them, and I'm not really sure why they're getting away from kits. I guess they probably don't make as much money off them as their K3 line and their new amplifier line and all that. But I don't know if you can read that. Let me see. It says right on there. And I mention this only because I just want to show you their attention to detail. Do not bend the relay leads. You can see it printed right on the circuit board. And uh, right up here. I had mentioned that is in the instructions, but they even had it put on the circuit board, silk screened right on there. I'm sure they ran into issues in the past where people did that, damaged the relays, and they had to go back and get them repaired. And they will repair your radio for you if you're not successful building it, by the way. But everything is detailed so well in the instructions and on the board they make it hard to fail. The uh, resistors for instance, I have two resistors to put in and uh, right here, I'm, I, there's no point in me focusing on that, but what I wanted to show you in that regard, let me put my autofocus back on, sorry, I keep forgetting about it. This is the resistors that come that are for the RF board and I, I know I mentioned this before but it bears repeating. The resistors are all different values, but they have them on this strip, beginning with the first resistor you put on the board on the left, all the way to the last resistor you put on the board on the right, and they're totally by value. Um, 
categorized as you put them on the board. So you just take them off one at a time, left to right. It, they make it extremely easy. They're definitely on par with the old Heath kit. Uh, and, I, and I say the old Heath kit because someone bought the company and is putting out kits that, I don't know, I haven't done one, I can't really say. They seem overpriced to me. But anyway, that's it has nothing to do with this. I'm going to finish continuing with this, put in the resistors, put in the capacitors, and then we're going to do some resistance checks on the next video. I'm going to wrap this video up here and publish this. This will be the last one for the day. I've been cranking out a few today because I've been working on this more. And I'm just going to put them out as I do them. And if some days it will be one or two or three a day. Other times if I'm working you won't see a video from me for a week or two. But that's just the way it is uh, with my work schedule and everything and how often I do this work. So 73. Thanks.